set aside each day to practice reading, keep books around the home, and make visits to the library. Ms. Shaw, Mayor of the City of the King, and on behalf of the Board of Mayor and Alderman, would like to proclaim November 7th, 2019 as Volunteer Literacy Recognition Day in Kingsport and encourage all individuals and families to advocate for reading and the younger generations so they will have a greater chance of future success. Signed 5 November by me, Patrick W. Scholl, Mayor, and thank you very much for what you do. Don and Don. Okay, uh, Mr. City Manager, <coughs> please proceed. First item is appointments to the Demolition by Neglect Committee. You have uh, two appointments here. One is a reappointment with Ms. Liza Harmon. The other one is a new Ms. Uh, Megan Alfin. We ask that you uh, approve this re resolution to make this appointment. Uh, Mr. Attorney, do you need to read that resolution? No. Nope. Okay. Uh, is there a motion to approve? Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor, please indicate by voting aye. 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 Any opposed? That's 6 4. Next item. Next item is your approval of minutes from the work session on 10 19 and the business meeting on 10 15. Is there a motion to approve these minutes for both the work session and the business meeting? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? If no discussion, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, Six zero passes. Next item. Next item is to amend the zoning text to create a definition for funeral services. As you will recall, we discussed this on September 30th and in October 1, we held a public hearing on that date. And at that time, we were asked to step back and send out letters to uh, business owners and residents that would surround these existing properties in order to make sure that we had done the proper notification. Uh, since then, I think Ken has sent out over 90 plus uh, letters and I'll let him take it from here to begin the, the second public hearing uh, on this. Next amendment would allow, allow uh, cremation services as accessory uses for existing funeral homes and any new funeral homes as well. Uh, during for, at the conclusion of first reading, uh, the board asked for additional notification above and beyond uh, what we typically do for public hearings. Um, I sent out uh, letters to all residents and property owners within 300 feet, all existing funeral homes. So I didn't receive any phone calls, but of course the letter was invited into this meeting. Uh, <coughs> so conduct a public hearing for any additional uh, thank you. Uh, uh, folks, uh, a public hearing will be conducted right now, but it only pertains to this particular item on funeral and internment services. If there's anyone in the uh, audience that would like to speak to the board on this matter and this matter only, please come forward. If no one wishes to come forward, then I declare the public hearing over uh, Mr. Attorney, would you please read the ordinance? An ordinance to further amend the code of ordinances, City of Kingsport, Tennessee, Section 114.1, and to fix the effective date of this ordinance. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a, a second? Second. Any discussion? 
I just want to say thank you to Mr. Weems and for the rest of the city staff on the opportunity to do a little more reading and public notice and be able to move to be comfortable moving forward. So thank you. Yeah, I agree. Thank you, Ken, for your work on this. Any other discussion? Uh, if not, uh, all those in favor, roll call. Oh, uh, excuse me, it's a roll call. Uh, Mr. Recorder. Alderman Adler. Aye. Alderman Duncan. Aye. Vice Mayor George. Aye. Alderman Alderman. Aye. Alderman Phillips. Aye. Mayor Schell. Aye. 601 absent. Uh, thank you, Mr. Williams. The next item, Mr. C. Manager. Next item is also a public hearing. This is the vacate unapproved right of way named Alabama Street, located off of Follow Street. Uh, this is uh, a paper street that we have identified and the need to vacate that. I'd ask that um, yeah. Jessica come forward and uh, kind of walk through this and we'll then open the public hearing. So this is a request that we received from the property owner. Um, it is to vacate a portion of an, an existing paper street named Alabama Street. The original street was platted back in 1917. Um, it's been around forever. You don't see any remnants of that street now when you go out there other than some gravel. Their intent with this is to combine that portion of right away with their existing property in the very area um, to meet setbacks and things like that. And their existing driveway actually utilizes this portion, so it just puts that contiguous with their property. Staff has um, contacted city departments as well as local ut utility providers to see if they have any utilities in this area, and they don't, and they see no future need for this area of land, so I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you, Ms. Harmon. Do you have any questions or comments for Ms. Harmon? If not, again, this is a public hearing for this specific item and no others. If there's anyone in the audience that would like to comment to the board for this item, please come forward. <coughs> Attorney, publish the item. An ordinance in a public right of way named Alabama Street, located off of Hollis Street, situated in the city, 12th Civil District of Sullivan County. And to fix a to fix the effective date of this ordinance. Thank you. Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Uh, the, it's on the floor for discussion. Is there any discussion? If not, it's a first reading. We'll take a voice vote. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Six zero -oh in favor. Uh, we the next portion of our meeting is a comment section and let me be very clear citizens may speak on agenda items on the agenda that we're considering tonight when you come to the podium please state your name and address <coughs> and you're encouraged to keep your comments non-personal in nature and they should be limited to five minutes a total of 30 minutes is allocated for public comment during this part of the agenda. Let me remind you, when we finish all our business that's on the agenda, there'll be another public comment section where citizens may comment on items of general civic interest. But this particular section of our proceeding is for commenting on items on this agenda that the board will deliberate on tonight. Having said that, if you please come, come forward. I'm Joe Carr, I live at 408 Berkeley Road. We have a choice to make right here, right now. Are the values of the United States worth fighting for? Values of Kingsport worth fighting for? I may disagree with what you have to say, but I will defend to death your right to say it. That's a timeless quote that used to represent America, but it doesn't anymore. We've forgotten how to disagree with one another. And I thought Kingsport was better than that. 
And right now it might not seem like a big deal because you're silencing someone you disagree with. And I'm sure you'll say that it's just a minor thing, you know, that this is for the public good. Well, forgive me, but I don't believe you. I've been hearing this sort of rhetoric my entire life. Just one more law, and then you'll be safe. Just one more infringement upon your constitutional rights, and then you'll be safe. And by the way, those inalienable constitutional rights weren't given to us by government. They were given to us by God. What truly disturbs me about this ordinance is that if you look at the unrelenting assault on the Constitution in this country, it's almost always coming from the left, not from the right. Conservatives are being censored by YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. There are dozens, if not hundreds, of videos of Trump supporters being attacked, being spit on, being stolen from. Last year, two Marines were assaulted by Antifa. Years ago, Edward Snowden exposed how the government can monitor all of your communications without a warrant, violating your constitutional rights. Beto O'Rourke, failed candidate for president who just dropped out of the race, said, hell yes, we're going to take your guns on live television during a debate. If we stifle the free speech of members of our community simply because we disagree with them, we're no better than the people who want to run our constitution through a wood chipper. We're no better than Antifa. We're no better than socialists and communists. The more steps we take to restrict the First Amendment now, the harder it will be to defend our values in the battle for the soul of our nation. Pat, I have the utmost respect for you, and even though we don't always see eye to eye, I've always thought that we both strongly value the <coughs> principles of liberty. Sir, you swore an oath to protect the Constitution, and tonight I would remember and uphold that oath. Liberty lies in the hearts of men and women. When it dies there, no Constitution, no law, no court can even do much to help it. Thank you. stand up here with Danny. My name is Jason Moore. I live at 1009 Yadkin Street. Ma'am, would you, for the record, state your name and address? Right. I'm just letting him finish signing. Danny Cook. Kingsport, Tennessee. Uh, don't you have a street address? I do. This Board of Mayor and Alderman has never made me give that street address for <coughs> privacy and safety concerns. Is that is that being changed tonight? Is that a requirement, Mr. Up to the board. Up to us? Yeah. Well, I'd prefer it, but I'll for tonight, I'll let this go. <laughs> Looks local to me. One hundred and eighty eight days ago, after five and a half months of researching, educating, and rallying the citizens of this region, I packed a couple of backpacks, grabbed a sleeping bag, and headed outside the Holston Valley Medical Center to exercise my First Amendment right in opposition to ballot health. Within a couple of hours, the citizens of this city and the region showed up to join me, and I'm grateful. However, tonight is not just about ballot health or the peaceful protest. Tonight is about a direct attempt by the city of Kingsport to restrict and dictate how the citizens of this city exercise their First Amendment right by weaponing a tool of the city that is intended to benefit us. The city attorney stated, and I quote, we're talking about mainly the area between the street and the edge of the sidewalk, end quote. Creating a new city ordinance that specifically targets the area of the public right of way where our camp sits is an abuse of this board's power. In addition, he stated, and I quote again, the sidewalks still are for pedestrian purposes and you still have to maintain a clearance for people, one, to comply with the Americans with Disability Act and also because that's what they're designed for, end quote. Our protest is not and has never been on a sidewalk. By misrepresenting our protest as occurring on a sidewalk, the city attorney sets a false factual predicate for the city's claim that it has the right to limit the time, place, and manner of the Supreme Court held that, and I quote, the nature of a place, the pattern of its normal activities dictate the kinds of regulations of time, place, and manner that are reasonable. 
In determining what is reasonable, the court stated that, quote, the crucial question is whether the manner of expression is basically incompatible with the normal activity of a particular place at a particular time. Where we exist is usually vacant. So unless this city is absurdly arguing that being vacant is a normal activity of the space that we occupy, that the city has a compelling interest in keeping it vacant, the city cannot claim that we are interfering with use by others. See Granted versus City of Rockford, that's 408 US 104, that's the code. With his statement, Mr. Billingsley also turns the issue of disability accommodation on its head. As ours is a protest focused on health care, it stands to reason that many of our participants have abilities. The city's proposed ordinance <coughs> constructively targets citizens whose disabilities prevent them from physically bearing totally unprotected exposure to the elements, MS, lupus, fibromyalgia. Under this ordinance, citizens who wish to X joining our protest will either be denied the ability to protect them themselves from the elements or they will be required to pay a permit fee for the privilege of protecting themselves. The ordinance's specific inclusion of the phrase including items used for shelter makes this abundantly clear. From a civil rights perspective, by imposing a, permanent require, a permit requirement and a fee, the proposed ordinance operates somewhat like an illegal poll tax, except instead of discouraging people from expressing themselves in the voting booth, the city will be discouraging people from expressing themselves in traditional public forms in the community. The Tennessee Supreme Court has held that licensing fees that affect speech rights must, and I quote, must be nominal and imposed only as a regulatory measure to defray the expenses of policing such activities. See State of Tennessee versus Smoky Mountain Secrets Incorporated, 937 Southwest 2D 905, 1996. While I'm grateful for what the city called a courtesy notice, I would have to disagree with the terminology. To call backstabbing its citizens of Kingsports with a proposal that will wreak harm upon the protest to save their health care is mere pretext and political spin. There is nothing polite or civilized about pursuing an ordinance that constructively forces people, especially those with certain disabilities, to choose between exercising their First Amendment rights and risking their health by unprotected exposure to the winter elements. Ordinances are supposed to serve the public good but function and function by t not function which special interests suppress citizen speech. The city, and I say it again, is weaponizing its ordinances while pretending that its actions are not a declaration of war on our peaceful protest. One might wonder how the city of Kingsport has managed to get along without such an ordinance before. Thank you. citizens would like to approach the bench please do uh, Jason again uh, I grew up here uh, I moved away for a little while uh, six months to Japan came back and I've been following this but I've been quiet when Phillips was mayor I wasn't quiet but I'm not going to be quiet anymore at some point silence becomes permission and my silence would give you permission if I don't come out here and tell you that I'm ashamed of you right now. What I've read this week, what your <laughs> what, what you believe that your citizens want is not what your citizens want. It's what your lobby wants. It's what ballot health care wants. It is not <laughs> what Kingsport wants. Let's have an emergency election. Let the people have a voice. Do they want valid? Do they not want valid? At, at some point, guys, you've got to work for Kingsport. You're public servants, not private servants. I didn't prepare a speech. I was supposed to work until 8.30. I took off. Not sick, but I am sick. I used to be so proud of this city. I've written books about this city, but, but none of y'all will read them because it doesn't pertain to your lobby, your interest. I've written children's books. I've never been contacted by some literary council. I've been on the bestseller list. I'm ashamed to be from Kingsport. I go to the VA. I'm lucky enough to go to the VA. I don't have to depend on ballots. <laughs> However, 
However, I have small children, and her, pedi her pediatrician just left, along with her, all of her colleagues just left to go to, to, to Franklin Woods because they're not imposing these quotas and all this about money. It's about care. Ballot is not about care. Ballot, ballot is about money. And if you follow the history, if you'll look in 60 Minutes, they did a, they did a, 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 a newscast on 60 Minutes several years ago before Mr. Levine came here and he was interviewed about eight and a half minutes into that video because they were being investigated for fraud and he came here shortly after he left Florida what happened to that investigation <coughs> I mean, I'm not gonna accuse you guys of just doing what ballot wants you need to do what your people elected you to do You know, we, we pledge allegiance to the flag, and we say a prayer. But sometimes that's not enough. Silence. Silence gives you guys permission. I'm not going to be quiet. Thanks. I'm Martha Simmons. Some of you know me well. And you um, please state your address, Ms. Simmons. I will live in Colonial Heights, and I will not put my address here either for uh, safety purposes. Uh, coming here tonight was like driving through a minefield. I don't know if any of you come from Colonial Heights. Three accidents on Center Street. Bang, bang, bang. Uh, and I thought coming down here, what I wanted to say to you, and the infrastructure of this town has just gone to pot. Our traffic getting here was like going through a minefield. Our roads, we got potholes. Businesses leaving and what happened to the crossings, does anyone know? Baseball park downtown, a silly, silly idea. We aren't even sure if the Mets are gonna be here next year or the next. Listen to your mayor, he knows what he's talking about. And I have an important note before I go any further. Lindsay White spoke before the Rotary Club on October the 23rd. At that time, she informed those attending that Ballard is not having any problem recruiting doctors. Who would know better, Lindsay or Dennis? Center Street should go back to four lanes. Greenbelt, nice, but it needs to be covered with some police officers. The homelessness, I'm naming all these things because these things should be on your plate, not changing an ordinance to suit somebody's fancy. <laughs> you all have wasted a lot of time trying to stop the peaceful protesters. Not one of you has tried anything to help us. You could have brought us some water down there back when it was really hot. All of a sudden, temperatures are in the 20s, and you decide that they can't have tents or tarps. Whose idea was this? Where'd that come from? You didn't stand with the community. You didn't try to do anything to help us. And I ask that you stop this nonsense of trying to run us off. Your ordinance is going to go against our First Amendment rights, and I personally have contacted the ACLU. Why don't you get busy taking care of the important things? Your plates are full. You don't need to be trying to do this. The, the big thing, and I'm gonna ask you right now, and I want you to think about it. There's something that you can do for us. You can let us do this hospital authority. You can come along with us. You can stand with us. <laughs> Hospital authority is there are a lot of experts here. Uh, be the first to step up and help us. S just, just do it for us, the community, for the people over in Southwest Virginia. You imagine this. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's supposed to have a bad winter, and you think about these little one-lane roads that come out of Southwest Virginia and, and Kentucky trying to get to Johnson City. They took away our NICU, they took away our trauma, and not a <coughs> one of you said a thing about it. 
Not a friend. Uh, I'd like to make an explanatory remark in regards to the administration of this particular proceedings. There's a simple reason why we request that you put down your street address is that often citizens will bring something to our attention that we just weren't aware of and it enables the city staff to follow up with that citizen to find out more about whatever situation they describe. Ma'am, your name and address for the record. Me? Yeah. Oh, okay. I was writing it down. Okay. Okay. Would you please stay? <laughs> Am I not supposed to write it down yeah, here? And okay. State I can also. speak and write at the same time, I guess. Okay. Um, so my name is Crystal Regan. It's 1812 Teneva Place here in Kingsport. My zip code's 37665. You need that. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak to you all tonight. And uh, I had made up my mind a few months ago. I was just going to quit coming. I didn't think you all were going to help us, so I put all my efforts into um, trying to get the federal government to help us. And we we've been doing good, asking the federal government to come in. But then this happened so here I am I'm back and I'm missing work and I really needed the money so I could pay my ballot bill but so is the way way of the world so first of all stating that this ordinance is about aesthetics and safety and not putting an end to the protest outside of the hospital is about like saying well I guess it's about like saying a wood block on a park bench is about meeting an ADA armrest requirement and not to deter the homeless. Someone I'm real fond of has a saying, you can put lipstick on a pig, but it's still a pig. And we've all seen the ballot health signs, the ones that say I am, and you fill in the blank, and it says I'm honest. And the first thing that comes to your mind is, if you're honest, you don't have to have an advertisement stating that you're honest. Your actions should speak to your integrity. And I had a similar experience when I was reading this proposed ordinance. This ordinance, it states, let's look here. Nothing in this um, section shall be construed to prohibit the exercise of rights preserved by the First Amendment of the United States Constitution of Article 1, Section 19 and 23 of the Tennessee Constitution. If this is not about prohibiting our First Amendment rights, why is there a little disclaimer in the document. The document should speak for itself that it is not going to infringe upon our First Amendment rights. There is also mention of a court case called Tucker versus the City of Fairfield. And I also found that interesting, so I started reading about that. What is interesting is that particular case is one in which the um, upper courts um, actually upheld the lower courts. Tucker won that. He got injunctive relief. Basically, it was about a rat balloon, and that was the face of the protest that they were stating. I think you could say that, I know when I see that canopy, what exactly is going on at the hospital. I think you could say that canopy is the face of the protest. And like a newsstand, it houses our means by which to get free speech out to Kingsport. We have protest. We have our petitions in there. We have newsletters. Um, so I think one could say, and I do believe if you pass this ordinance, I believe much like Lynn Tucker, certain citizens within this city will file for injunctive relief in the courts. And I believe that they will receive the same decision. <laughs> so what we can do is we need to have our complaints. We need to file our complaints with the ACLU here in Tennessee. Freedom of expression is the matrix, the indispensable condition of nearly every other form of freedom. It is the building block upon which the rest of the Constitution sits. Thank you.
My name is Crystal Moore, and I live at 720 Robinwood Road in Kingsport. Um, we all know what the ordinance is about that you'll be voting on to pass tonight. It's about trying to shut down the peaceful protest that's been going on outside of Polston Valley for 188 days now. Nothing more, nothing less. You sat back in silence for months and months, with the exception of a couple of you, and did absolutely nothing while Ballot um, dismantled our hospital from within by downgrading our level one trauma center and closing our NICU, which you know will ultimately result in this. I was at the meeting where the statistics and the real facts were presented to you. But you now claim to care about the aesthetics of a patch of grass outside of the hospital. Holston Valley could have the most beautiful grounds of any hospital in the country, but what good is it going to do when the heart and soul of the hospital has been destroyed? You were silent as the citizens of this town begged you to step up and be a voice and vote to pass a resolution opposing those downgrades. You chose not to fight for the health care of our citizens, but we have citizens who are fighting for our health care every single day. Everyone who's been involved with the protest, with the peaceful protest, has followed all laws and all city ordinances for the 188 days they've been out there. Have any one of you even been down to the protest to see the setup, um, to see what's going on, to check it out, to, like she said, offer them, do you need anything? Is there anything we can do for you? Um, to go down and be a voice for our health care, for your health care. They have a right to be there and they have a right to provide themselves shelter from the elements. So please don't take that away from them. If you do choose to vote yes tonight to pass this ordinance, it's going to show where your true loyalties and priorities lie, which will clearly not be with the citizens of this town or this community. You missed the opportunity once to do what was right by the citizens who trusted you and voted you into your positions. But you sat back as our hospital dismantled all of that from within. Please don't let another opportunity pass you by tonight to do the right thing. Vote no to passing this ordinance. Excuse me, ma'am. I'm sort of getting the gist of some of the folks' concern about the particular right-of-way ordinance. I want to remind the audience that this comment section is for folks to comment about anything that's on our agenda. So I want to ask the audience, is there someone who would like to speak about an item other than the right-of-way ordinance? No. 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 That's fine. Then, unless you have something new to offer, this will be the last person on this no. particular section. No. No. Yes, sir. Go ahead, ma'am. State your name and address. My name is Danielle Faulkner. I live off Memorial Boulevard, and that's as far as I'm going to give you because I've learned how retaliatory the city of Kingsport can be, and I refuse to provide that. It is written down if you need it. I'm a mother of three children, beautiful children. I moved to Kingsport, Tennessee when I was 11 years old out of Florida. I have argued with my husband for five years about where we want to raise our children. I fight to keep my children in Kingsport. It's getting harder to fight for that. I will say I come, my father is military. My grandfather is military. Father-in-law is military. My sister, my brother-in-law, they fought for your rights to say what you want to say. Here's my problem. You all, as a general, and Ballot Health is fighting to shut up a woman who did the same thing. That is not fair. My family fought for her right to do that. She served this country when she didn't have to. Many other people have served this country. Now I will say I voted for some of you based on your campaign promises. I voted for a better Kingsport. I voted for we need change in Kingsport. I voted because I knew people who knew you and I thought there's no way they would associate themselves with bad people. I want to believe that. I want to believe that my children are growing up in the model city. I want to believe that my children are going to grow up to where when they believe something, they can fight for that. Because right now, you're hindering their ability to fight for that. You are hindering 
my children's ability to seek adequate medical treatment in this area is what Ballot Health has done. All of my children see specialists for various reasons. These two right here are getting ready to lose a specialist because they refuse to work for Ballot Health that we have seen for years. You stopping our protesters, you stopping these people who are doing nothing wrong is only making Ballot Health seem a little bit bigger and a little bit stronger and it's hurting our area. I know women who are driving two hours to have children because of what Ballot Health is doing to our area. That should not happen. That is not beneficial to King Sport. What you all are voting on is not going to be beneficial to King Sport. You work for the people. The people voted you. The people can outvote you. Yeah. We put you into your office. We put you at that table. Every single one of you. We put you there. Please don't make us look stupid for doing it. Because as easily as we put you there, we can take you back out of there. It's ridiculous. You work for the city. You work for the people of Kingsport. Can we hold up our phones? This is what the city wants. This is what the people of Kingsport are saying. Ballot health is not Kingsport. Ballot health is not the values of Kingsport City. Ballot health is not why I fight my husband to stay here. Ballot health is going to be the reason why I move the hell out of here. That is the truth. You work for me, you don't work for Ballard. I put you in and I can take you back out. We do. Mr. Mayor, I can say right now, I don't appreciate your smirk. You said not to make this personal, but as I stand back there and I watch you, and anything that somebody has negative to say about this ordinance and you sit there and smirk, that is disrespectful. That is blatantly disrespectful and it is uncalled for. Yes, sir, you do work for me. I am a citizen of this town. I voted you. You work for me, not Ballot Health. And I realize Ballot Health can sign a hell of a lot bigger check than I can, but you still work for me, sir, not them. I declare this part of the proceedings to be adjourned. We'll go into our regular session. Yes, sir. Because you don't like the response. I will clear this room with the police. We are not We have, if you had have paid a, attention, have you would have known there was 30 minutes allocated for this part of the, uh, the agenda, and we've been well over that. I declare this part over. I have over. a different take on I it. I don't near, need you to hear, want to hear the same take. argument over and over again. It's not the same. Let us speak. Let us speak. Let us speak. We have an agenda, and we're going to follow it. Mr. City Manager, please proceed. It's not the agenda of the people. Okay, you, last night the board had asked that we move item uh, D4 to the uh, front of the agenda. And at this time, I'll pull that item out unless there's any objection to that. This is a consideration of a resolution approving the donation of city-owned property located on Gibson Mill Road to Sullivan County government for the construction of the new EMS station. Uh, this has been a project that's been on ongoing for quite some time. Uh, really actually began with former city manager Jeff Fleming and been carried forward. Uh, this is a piece of property that the city acquired uh, during some improvements made to Gibson Mill Road and in conversations with Gary Mays and other members of the Sullivan County Commission, it was uh, determined that this would be an excellent site for a new EMS station as a result of the displacement of one uh, off of Wilcox Drive. And so the city of Kingsport is pleased to enter into this partnership with the county. And at this time, Mayor, we'd be happy to answer any questions, but we'd ask that you approve the resolution. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Attorney, would you please read the resolution? A resolution authorizing donation of approximately 1.336 acres of real property located on Gibson Mill Road to Sullivan County to construct a new EMS station and 
and authorizing the mayor to execute an appropriate deed and all other documents necessary and proper to convey the property to Sullivan County. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve? So move. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Excited. Uh, County Commissioners, thank you for your work on this item. Uh, it's been a great uh, partnership for this particular uh, uh, matter, and I appreciate your work on it. If there's no further discussion, uh, I will take a, a voice vote. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Uh, aye. aye. Any opposed? It passes 6-0. Mr. City Manager. Moving back to the regular part of the agenda, item B1. Uh, this is a budget ordinance to appropriate funds from the Tennessee Highway Safety Office. FY20 coordinator grant. This is yet another grant that we've been able to receive from the Tennessee Highway Safety Office. This will provide uh, funding in the amount of $20,000 to send staff to related traffic workshops and conferences. Again, <coughs> appreciate the work staff does to secure these grants. We'd ask that you approve the budget ordinance on first reading. Um, Mr. Attorney, would you please read the item? In order to amend the general project special revenue fund budget by appropriating grant funds received from the Tennessee Highway Safety Office, THSO, for the year ending June 30, 2020, and to fix the effective date of this ordinance. Thank you. This is an ordinance on first reading. Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? If not, uh, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? None opposed. 6 0 pass. Next item. Next item is accept a private monetary donation for the police canine program and to appropriate funds. Uh, often, and we're greatly appreciative, citizens provide funding towards our canine program. Uh, this is, is in an amount of $2,500 from Mr. Frederick Baggett, and we appreciate that. That will go to just the overall maintenance and training of our existing canine animals. So we'd ask that you approve the uh, resolution and ordinance. And we have to do that separately, don't we, Mr. Attorney? Yes. Okay. Would you please read the resolution? A resolution <coughs> accepting a monetary donation for the Kingsport Police Department canine program. Thank you. Uh, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? <coughs> second. It's on the floor for discussion. Is there any discussion? If not, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? None opposed, 6-0, it passes. Uh, would you please publish the ordinance? In ordinance to amend the general project special revenue fund budget by appropriating donated funds for the year ending June 30, 2020, and to fix the effective date of this ordinance. Thank you. Uh, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 None opposed. 6-0, uh, it passes. Next item. Next item is, a, is to enter into an agreement with TDOT for resurfacing of various roads. Uh, as you will recall, recently $500,000 was set aside uh, to match uh, state money that is provided to the City of Kingsport through our Metropolitan Transportation Planning Office. The $500,000 was then able to be leveraged into 2.5 million. Uh, what this does is it takes the, the money that we have, uh, sets up that agreement in order for us to begin the process of securing the necessary engineering work to have this done. I wanna list off the, the streets that, that we are looking at. As we discussed last night, the bulk of this is going towards roads that uh, we have determined uh, are in need based upon analysis done by the engineering department and as well as uh, through outside assistance through consultants that we've used to evaluate our roads. I apologize as I scroll through this to the exhibit. Um, we'll get there eventually. You might have to, hang on a second. Here we go. Sorry about that. So this will be funding um, work on uh, sex and, or segments of Moreland <coughs> Drive from SR 36 to Kingsport City Limits, Meadowview Parkway from SR 126 or Wilcox to the Kingsport City Limits, Fall Creek Road 
from the bridge over Pat Fort Patrick Henry Lake to the Kingsport City Limits, Cooks Valley Road from Harbor Chapel to Old Cooks Valley Road and Netherland Inn from SR1 to Big Elm Road. We do not anticipate this work beginning until sometime after uh, July into the next fiscal year. Uh, it will, as we have stated before, it will take longer based upon the fact that we are having to go through the, the state process for this. Uh, but nonetheless, this will allow us to focus some of our dollars that you all budget annually for paving more on our local streets, our residential streets, uh, and allow us to hit some of these longer segments or, or wider roadways. So glad to move this forward. We can't pay, we have to answer any questions. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, Mr. Attorney, would you publish the ordinance? An ordinance to amend the MPO project fund and the general project's special revenue fund budgets and to fix the effective date of this ordinance. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve? So yeah. moved. Is there a, I've had a motion to approve and a second. <coughs> Any discussion? It, just, uh, Mr. City Manager, with this, how much money does this make that we've put in paving in the last two years? You look at a two-year period projected, we're a little over $7 million that we have allocated towards paving. So I feel like we're probably meeting the public's need on paving right now. <laughs> okay, are there any other discussion? Uh, this is a first reading. I'll take a voice vote. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It passes 6-0. Mr. C. Manager. Next item is a sewer budget adjustment ordinance for fiscal year 20. Uh, we are in the pro we need to close several existing projects that have been completed in order to move forward on an existing project. So we'd ask that you approve the budget ordinance to allow these projects to be closed and for the items to be transferred to a new project. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Attorney, would you please read the ordinance? In order to amend the sewer project fund budget and to fix the effective debt of this ordinance. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is second. there a se second? Uh, it's now on the floor for discussion. Is there any discussion? <coughs> if not, uh, it's a first reading. Uh, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes 6 0. Next item. Next item is an ordinance uh, to amend the city code by adding a new section in chapter 62 <coughs> dealing, dealing with offenses and, and nuisances pertaining to permanent or temporary structures on the public right of way. I'd ask that city attorney, Mr. Billingsley, read through this, please. An ordinance amending the code of ordinances, city of Kingsport, <coughs> by adding a new section to chapter 62, offenses and nuisances pertaining to temporary or permanent structures on public right of ways, rights of way and to fix the penalty for the violation of this ordinance, to provide for the severability of this ordinance, and to fix the effect of that of this ordinance. Thank you. Uh, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. It's on the floor for discussion. I'm going to break from tradition, and I will go first on this discussion. There was a gentleman that came forward a few minutes ago to the podium and referenced uh, my taking of an oath, and that's correct. As a young man at the age of 21, I was commissioned a second lieutenant of the United States Army. And at that time, I raised my right hand and swore to uphold and defend the United States Constitution. I have never wavered from that oath. I, I follow it to this day, and I take it very seriously. This particular ordinance does not preclude citizens from protesting in a peaceful and appropriate manner. I listen to you, you can listen to me. The purpose of this ordinance, if there's outburst, I will have the police remove the, the offender. The purpose of this ordinance is to maintain a safe and aesthetically pleasing roadway, right of way. As I pondered this, I thought, what if the obstructions occurred anywhere in town for any reason? And it became clear as I thought through 
that to allow obstructions in our right of way set a bad precedent. Our our mission on this on our our mission on this board is to maintain an orderly city. Now I can understand that people disagree. Believe you me, I get emails from plenty of people who agree with this action. So I strongly support this action. I'll vote for this. And I encourage my colleagues to, to do likewise. I open the floor for further discussion. Mayor, is it possible for me to make a motion to have this item removed from the agenda to allow for further public comment for and against and for the alderman to take into consideration that comment? Uh, <laughs> Mr. Attorney, correct me if I, if I get this wrong, but she can move to defer she would need a second, and then we would vote on the motion to she's, defer. She's asking, I think, are we asking to put it at the heels of the docket, or are we asking to defer it? To defer. Uh, she'd make a motion to defer to it, if, if it's deferred indefinitely, <coughs> or to defer for, to a specific time. I move to defer indefinitely. Is there a second on this motion to defer indefinitely? If there is no second, the motion <coughs> fails for lack of a second. We're now back to the original you know, Mayor, uh, motion, and we're open for discussion. Yes, I'd like to in. speak on this uh, just yeah. for a second. Um, I, do, I, I really, my vote is going to be no uh, for this. And, uh, <laughs> And it, it's probably for a different. It's for different reasons, but one reason is is the impending uh, probability of lawsuits that will come. Our citizens, many of you in here, will be paying for those lawsuits, and, and uh, so uh, I feel like that we probably uh, maybe not be in the situation to understand uh, the litigation aspect of this. Um, at least from my aspect of it anyway. This by no means is, should be taken that I'm really for the, the protesters. I think that you uh, uh, certainly raised awareness <coughs> to our health care for a while. Uh, I have not seen that recently in, in the past few months. Um, well, so, so, and that's my, that's my feeling. That is the feeling of a number of people that I talked to over the weekend with this too. So, I do feel like man, let the alderman speak. I do feel like that there are safety implications with you with you being there. I feel like as winter is coming, um, you know, you can easily step off the curb. It's not a matter of if when somebody gets hurt; it's a matter of when when a car slips down the hill and wipes out the tents. I can see see disaster coming. But my my vote tonight will be no for this reason. And, uh, but it's really for the citizens of Kingsport that's going to be paying the lawsuits uh, for this, I think. Yeah. Thank you for your comments. Is, the, is there any other discussion? Mayor, I have a few questions. Could I ask the city attorney for some clarification? Yes, ma'am. questions. City attorney, are there aesthetic codes that would prohibit my placement of certain items in the right-of-way currently as a property owner? We have aesthetic codes that apply to properties. I assume those apply to the right-of-way if I'm the owner of the property. Um. When you say aesthetics, what, what, what? So we have codes, for example, that I'm not allowed to place undue amounts of trash or garbage or broken down cars in, in my property. Right. Those apply to the right of way? Those are covered. Well, if you have a car that's considered uh, inoperable or not properly mm -hmm. registered, that's covered by a provision in the uh, uh, International uh, Property <laughs> Maintenance Code. Okay. Uh, and so it would be not proper to have that on your uh, property. So we have we have aesthetic you, codes that apply to the right of way. We, well, they apply to your to your property. Which, yes. it, and my understanding, and I had clarified this today, a right of way is an easement on behalf of the city, but the property owner is the owner of the property that that is in the right of way. Normally, that's, that's the way it works. So, for example, where the protesters are located is property that is owned by Ballard. Correct. No. 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 That is. 
That is correct. So a public right-of-way is an easement on behalf of the city, but the underlying property owner remains the property owner. This is a dedicated right-of-way, uh, dedicated in a plat, uh, and the property owner doesn't surrender the property rights mm -hmm. the ownership of the property. They surrender the use of the property for the city to use it for right-of-way purposes, which includes roadways, sidewalks, utilities, and things like that. Uh, and that's what that's what a, a right of way, dedicated right of ways means. And most, and most property, most most streets, most sidewalks are dedicated right of ways mm -hmm. in Tennessee, in Tennessee, and in most cities in Tennessee. So if someone comes to my property, <clears throat> including the right of way, correct, I could have them removed, except for cases where it is the case of protest. Uh, you could you could have them re well, you might in your on your own personal property mm -hmm. in your front yard. It might be a little bit different, but yeah, if there was a sidewalk there, they could walk to the front of your uh, house, yes, yeah. with, with, the, with the protest, yes. There is, this is a very complex issue. They, they, could not, a lot. they could not interfere with your peaceful enjoyment of the property, so they could make right. a lot of noise and stuff, but yes, they would have the right, except in certain circumstances that are uh, governed by federal law, um, uh, that would be right, that would be correct. So as I thought about my, my vote today, I recalled what someone said to me about our state government just last year. Someone said to me that each year our legislators, legislators go to Nashville in the spring and they pass legislation that is meant to address an issue that is occurring in one corner of the state. Sometimes the issue is not just in one corner of a city, but it's a particular place, a particular narrow instance. And they pass the law and the law then goes on to apply to all of the state. And then those same legislators go back next spring and pass more legislation to unwind all of the unintended consequences of a law that impacts all cities where there was not a problem in the first place. I believe there are parallels here. I have yet to be presented <coughs> compelling evidence that there are widespread issues not already addressed by city code. And moreover, I believe that this is an act that is likely to have unintended consequences that we have not considered. So far as I'm aware, there is no history of litigation between the city and property owners regarding right-of-way usage, which is likely because our code, as it already stands, is clear, fair, and compliant with existing jurisprudence. So this particular code has also given me a pause from a fairness perspective. If an action came before this board that was intended to clearly benefit one citizen or a very narrow group of citizens, I would have an ethical challenge. A decision like that would warrant a very high level of scrutiny, and in its most extreme, one might wonder whether apparent favoritism represented an abuse of power or of one's office. And so then I wonder if the opposite is not true. If what we do at this table appears to narrowly directed to disadvantage a small subset of citizens, is it not reasonable to think that an action like that deserves a much higher level of scrutiny and evaluation? Yes. Now, I am not going to say that after that scrutiny and evaluation that I would automatically say that the city didn't have a right to restrict those actions or to make that decision, but I think it is a case in where exceptional care is required. The first time I saw this ordinance was Thursday, and I'm still thinking through the consequences and the challenges it raises. I've had consequences brought to me today that had not been raised and discussed. This is not something to proceed without caution. So I deeply respect the mayor and my fellow aldermen's right to look at the very same facts and to arrive at different conclusions. But for the reasons stated here, I will also be voting no this evening. Thank you. Is there further discussion? Patrick, I, I'd like to say that uh, I, I even signed the petition that was circulated around several months ago. And uh, I, have, uh, I have been down the path with many of y'all when the closing of the NICU and the, the doctors leaving. I mean, I don't think any of us really knows what Ballard's going to do because they're, they're an entity within their own self 
and and I find it hard when when some of the public ask me, well, well, why don't you create a a public hospital or something like that? We, I mean, we can't do that. I mean, uh, and, and have it have it be effective, and have it be effective. I mean, I I I, I don't see it. I really don't see it. But the but the loss of the NICU, do what? I can see. I can see. And 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 the loss of the NICU. I'll rest my case right there. Okay. Any that other further discussion on this item? If there's no further discussion, although this is first reading, I'm going to ask the recorder to take a roll call vote. Alderman Adler. Nay. Alderman Duncan. Nay. Vice Mayor George. Aye. Alderman Alderman. Aye. Alderman Phillips? Aye. Mayor Shaw? Aye. It passes on a 4-2 vote at first reading. There will be a second reading two weeks uh, from tonight. Uh, Mr. City Manager? Next item is to award a contract to Jay Cumby and a budget ordinance to transfer funds for the West Kingsport Sewer Lift Station and Force Main Project. Uh, this is a project that we've been working on for quite some time. It's a nearly $6 million project that will not only provide a new lift station off of Nevelin Inn Road, uh, but it will also replace a force main leading into the wastewater treatment plant. We don't anticipate this work beginning until after the uh, beginning of the new year. Uh, we will try to make sure the green belt stays open where it can, provide other uh, alternative routes when necessary, uh, but we'd ask that you move forward with the approval of this ordinance on first reading, please. Well, Ryan McReynolds is available if you have any specific questions related to it. Thank you. Uh, stand by, Mr. McReynolds. Uh, City Attorney, would you please read? An ordinance to amend the sewer project fund budget and to fix the effective date of this ordinance. Thank you. Now, uh, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. There's a second and a, a motion. It's on the floor for discussion or if you wish to ask Mr. Uh, McReynolds to add uh, uh, to your understanding of this. If there's no further discussion, uh, this is a resolution. I'll ask for a voice vote. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. Passes 6-0. Mr. Sigmund. Next item, you have three items for final adoption. Uh, the first item is to appropriate funds from the U.S. Department of Justice Office of Justice Programs for Bulletproof Vest Funding Partnership. Uh, this is a grant of a little over $10,000 that will provide funding for the reimbursement of vest expenditures. We'd ask that you approve the budget ordinance on second and final reading. Uh, second reading, would you please read the ordinance, Mr. Attorney? An ordinance to amend the general project special revenue fund budget by appropriating grant funds received from the Department of Justice for the year ending June 30, 2020, and to fix the effective date of this ordinance. Thank you. Is there a uh, motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. It's on the floor for discussion. <laughs> Ma'am? Okay. <laughs> we, got, we got a second and a third. Okay. Uh, is there discussion on this matter? If no discussion, it's an ordinance on second reading. Mr. Recorder, would you take a roll call vote? Alderman Adler? Aye. Alderman Duncan? Aye. Vice Mayor George? Aye. Alderman Alderman? Aye. Alderman Phillips? Aye. Mayor Shaw. Aye. It passes 6-0. Next item, please. Next item is to appropriate creative placemaking grant funds from the Tennessee Arts Commission. This is for a project that will enhance the alleyway running parallel to Main Street to create a pedestrian walkway in our downtown. 
we ask that you approve this ordinance on second and final reading. Would you, Mr. Attorney, would you publish the ordinance? An ordinance to amend the general project special revenue fund budget by appropriating grant funds received from the Tennessee Arts Commission for the year ending June 30, 2020 and to fix the effective date of this ordinance. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? second.